this is the day which the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to our family and friends worshiping with us in person on Facebook Live and on our official YouTube channel. We bring you greetings from the Bethel Community Church right here in the beautiful city of Fairfield, California. Our pastor is Anthony Gilmore. For those of you who would like to send cards, prayer requests, or words of encouragement, our mailing address is 600 East Tabor Avenue, Fairfield, California, 94533. If you would like to send donations, you can use Givelify, Venmo, or the Cash App. We want to thank you for worshiping with us each week and supporting this ministry. We are here to bring you hope, peace, and joy. We are glad you are here in the building and at home watching, and we praise God for technology. So let's all praise him for all he's done and worship him for who he is.
Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. Let me say that again. For the Lord is good. Hallelujah. Bless his name. The Lord is good and he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Give him glory in this place. We came to worship him in spirit and in truth. Bless his name. Somebody lay down last night and didn't rise this morning. You are here. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, God. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, bless the name, Jesus. Great is the Lord 
and greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. On behalf of my pastor, the Reverend A.O. Gilmore and First Lady Gilmore, and the entire BCC family, visitors, we're so glad that you stopped by here on your way to heaven, where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. So in the name of our Father, in the name of his Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless each and every one of you.
greatly to be praised. Great is the Lord for his goodness and mercy endures forever and ever. How many come to praise the Lord this morning? Put your hands together.
Hallelujah. Lift up Jesus. The devil's already defeated. He don't have no more power than what you give him. And we came to praise him this morning for his goodness and his mercy toward us. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you cared for me in such a special way. And yes, I I'll praise you. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify your name. Oh, that's why. My heart, how many came to praise him, is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. I don't take for granted the Lord's care for me in such a special way. And yes, I'll praise you. I'll lift you up. If I got to do it all by myself, I'm going to marry. my praise on what happened yesterday because all I have is right now I said my heart my mind my soul belongs to you 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 pay the price for me, way, 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 back on Calvary. Oh, 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 and yes, I'll praise you. I'm gonna give them everything all the time. I'm not going to choose when I'm going to give them my everything. I'll lift you up. I'll magnify your name. Somebody laid down that didn't wake up this morning. Oh, so I'm not going to waste my praise on that. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, everybody say, Jesus, keep me.
God, our Father, we come now with thanksgiving in our hearts. Thank you for another Sunday morning. Thank you for another expression of your love. Thank you for another worship opportunity. Lord, the time has come for us to look at your word, and Lord, your word is big, and I'm little. Your word is powerful, and I'm so weak. Pray that you would forgive us of our sins, sins of omission, sins of commission. Blot out our transgressions. Create within us a clean heart. Forgive us now. We haven't kept your commandments so well, for your word says all have sinned and come short of your glory. Look on us now. Bless this waiting congregation. Lord, you know what we need today. Speak to our hearts through your word. Look on those who are watching far and near. Pray that you would remember those who are sick today. Remember Sister Regina Mixon today. Look on those who are sick today. Those that have asked for prayer, look and have mercy. Remember Sister Williams today. Her hour of bereavement, look on her family. Remember Sister Lisa Bay today and her family in their hour of bereavement. We know that you are able to bind up wounded hearts and give ease to troubled minds. Remember Sister Eddie Jones today. Remember Mother Burns today. Remember Mother Crookshank today. All of our seniors, Mother Foster, look on them today in a special way. Look on us now. And when it's yours to call and ours to answer, receive us unto thyself in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Church, say amen. Turning your thoughts today, book of Revelation, 
Revelations is the last book of your Bible. Revelations, we're going to look at chapter 2, if you would stand for the reading of God's Word. Good to see the family of Brother Keith Hamilton here today, sharing with us from Texas. Good to see all of our guests today. Give it up for our guests today. Thank God for all of our guests today, the family of Sister Juanita Webb and Sister Therese. Good to see you. Revelations chapter 2. Revelations, the last book of your Bible. We're going to look at chapter 2, verse number 7. I would that three people would read just verse number 7. Revelations chapter 2, verse number 7. Bless you. You. Thank you all for reading. I want to use for a subject today just for a few minutes, if it pleases our Christ. Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? Is anybody listening? I wonder today, Sister Lee, is anybody listening? I wonder, I wonder, Sister Coleman, is it? Does anybody hear what's being said? I wonder. I wonder, Sister Williams, I'm wondering, are we listening? Brother Mixon, yes. I, that's the question today. Is anybody listening? Are y'all in here today? We are, Sister Irving, at a critical point in history. I wish y'all could hear me today. Not only, Reverend Evans, as it relates to uh, our local congregation, but having gone through Brother Norris, uh, the pandemic, Sister Wallace, over the last few years, I believe we are at a critical point in history. If you will agree with me today, uh, uh, you will agree that over the last few years, church as we know it has changed. Are y'all in here today? Show me a church that didn't change during the pandemic, and I will show you a dead church. People come, Sister Hall, and ask me, Brother Pastor, can't we just do it how we used to do it? No, church has changed. Uh, 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 Brother Fred, uh, 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 as members of the body of Christ, we are at a critical point in history. What do you mean? Well, Sister Swayze, the church is seeing more productivity than she ever has in her history. Why do I say that? Well, there was a time when we wanted folk to come to our building. Are y'all in here? But now folks can stay at home in the comfort, Sister Wicker, of their home in their bathrobe with their coffee or whatever other drink they drink and watch church. Are y'all in here? There are some people right now, Sister Bernice, they're not in the room, but they are in our midst. Are y'all with me? And I don't know about you, but I ain't mad at folk who turn on the screen and participate. Are y'all with me? Uh, we get, uh, Tasha, we have folks that are sharing with us right now all the way in Savannah, Georgia, New York, uh, 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 Arkansas. People are sharing. In other words, church has changed. Are y'all with me? Uh, uh, the church uh, is seeing more productivity. The hand of God is moving. Y'all ain't with me today. 
and, and, and Brother Hamilton, it's critical that the church has clear direction concerning her destiny. Where do we go, Brother Canton, from here? Are y'all in here? And I, I don't know how you feel about it, but prophecy is what gives the church clear direction. Uh, it, it's important, it's important, Reverend Johnson, that we understand what God is doing and what role we play in the purpose of God for this time. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. Well, it's important that we keep up with what God is doing, y'all. Uh, uh, why, why is it important? It's important because uh, a few years ago, God introduced Zoom calls to the church. Uh, a few years ago, God introduced online giving to the church. Y'all ain't with me. Some people still hold on to writing a check for offering on Sunday. I ain't getting no help today. Some people say, well, I ain't going to dial in on no conference call. I don't know nothing about Zoom, but it's important that the church keeps up with what God is. The church has suffered. Y'all ain't with me. The church has suffered over the years, Sabrina, greatly because we have for so long relied on God to get us started. And, 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 and once we gotten off our feet, We've forgotten the God that brought us. Come on, go with me. You, 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 you can go back just a few years ago. God's been good to the church. Y'all ain't with me. I don't know about nobody else, but particularly to the black church. Are y'all with me? There was a time, there was a time when uh, we had to march and we were... Uh, uh, bitten by dogs and sprayed by water hoses. God has been good to us. Yeah, some will say, no, no, pastor, we ain't forgot uh, God. We ain't forgot how good he is because we still sing his songs. We still pray. We still testify. We still worship his name. Well, I disagree. Yet there's so much that goes on in our modern-day churches that have absolutely nothing to do with God. I know y'all don't like this kind of preaching, but uh, uh, I'm going to stick to the Bible because I don't want to make nobody mad. But there's a whole lot of junk that goes on in some of our churches that ain't got nothing to do with God. Uh, Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. L let me stick to the word. Well, you recall Bible readers. Come on, Bible readers. Come close. Bible readers, you remember John had been arrested and thrown in jail. He was on his way, Sister Robin, to uh, the chopping block. But prior to his demise, he sent word back uh, uh, to Jesus wanting to know, Lord, are you the one or should we be looking for another? John, Therese, John, John, John was concerned that the purpose of God be protected and he was very meticulous about whose hands that purpose was being placed in. Jesus sent word back to John, uh, not simply with a one-word answer of a yes or no, but he simply gave John some evidence. Are y'all in here? What did he say, Bible readers? He said, tell John the lame walk. John, tell John uh, the blind see and the deaf hear. In other words, Brother Will, not only will you know this movement because it's authentic, but, but because somebody you know uh, 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 said so. You won't know it just because you heard about it or somebody told you, but because the movement is bearing fruit. Are y'all with me? Uh, Sister Gaddis, in other words, regardless of our political position, our socioeconomic concerns, our budgetary concerns, we got to understand that the evidence is in the manifestation of gifts. Are y'all in here? What do you mean, Reverend? Well, uh, 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 we got to know that the movement is real because every now and then we ought to see somebody get healed. 
Every now and then, we ought to see somebody get delivered. Are y'all in here? Uh, deliver me from a church where there is no liberty. Deliver me from a church where nobody ever comes back and says, look what the Lord has done for me. And, and so we live in a day, we live in a day, uh, Reverend Coleman, where we define a mega ministry, a mega church by the size of its membership. But God, I came to serve notice on you, is not interested in numbers to count. No, 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 no. But he's in, interested in numbers that do count. Uh, 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 and so I wonder today, can God count on us? Uh, 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 sister, see, we who, we who are here to witness what God is doing, uh, we got to resist the temptation of boxing God in with our little religious whims and our traditional methods. A few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, we had uh, Throwback Sunday, and Sister Angela, we had the choir to march in, and they came in bopping from side to side, and it was good, y'all ain't saying nothing. It was good old-fashioned church, and not too many days after Reverend Evans, people said, well, Pastor, can't we just keep doing it that way? Can't the choir just march in again every Sunday with the roll? Church has changed. Uh, and I come to suggest to you today that if you keep doing what you've been doing, you keep getting what you got. That is the definition of insanity. You don't want to be labeled as crazy, do you? Church has changed. And so, Brother Powell, God is too big for us to try to box him in and limit what he wants to do in our lives, in our church, in our community. It's hard to resist the temptation to box him in because whenever God takes a liberty, it always affects our personal stability. Okay, you don't like this kind of preaching. Well, why, why do I say that? Well, because the first question we want to ask when God takes us out of our box of tradition, we want to start saying, God, what are you doing? Okay, you don't like this, but uh, Minister Robertson, when Moses got to the Red Sea, he couldn't get across the water. Are y'all with me? <laughs> In my imagination, God takes the liberty and tells Moses, stretch out your rod. Uh, well, I, I mean, we understand, Kyla, that the power wasn't in the rod, but it was in the faith. It was in his faith. Y'all ain't in here. It was faith that enabled Moses uh, to believe that if he obeyed God with the little that he had, y'all ain't saying nothing. If you obey God with the little that you have, God will give you what you need. I wish y'all could hear me today. And so, no, 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 it didn't take much, Bible readers, it didn't take much. Uh, it didn't take much uh, uh, to march around a wall for six days in total silence. No, it, it, it really didn't make sense to do it seven times on the seventh day, but because God's way ain't our way, y'all ain't with me. Uh, 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 marching was simply acting on God's word and believing God for the result. And so what the people of God fail to realize is that uh, 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 we may not start with but two fish and five barley loaves. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. But little becomes much. When you place it in <laughs> the master's hand, and, 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 and when he gets through blessing it, uh, I'm getting excited. I'm trying to get this through. But little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. And when, then when he blesses it, it'll become more than enough uh, to do what he needs done. And so uh, uh, I heard Pastor Les Lester Gillespie uh, of San Antonio, Texas, once say uh, uh, that, that, that what had happened when they put the fish in Jesus' hands was inevitable. He said what happened 
Sister Lambert, when they put the fish in the hands of Jesus, uh, when you place fish in the hands of living water, <laughs> how can it not multiply? How can it not reproduce? Uh, 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 and, and Pastor Lester said, it must have been a male and a female fish. Because <laughs> they placed the fish in the living water. <laughs> And it was inevitable that the fish would reproduce. Uh, uh, there's a powerful move of God going on right now in the body of Christ. And I believe its purpose to change us from glory to glory and move us from faith to faith. And so it's critical that we catch the wave of God. Y'all ain't with me. Uh, I mean, you got to catch the wave of God if you want to really know what God is doing. Yes, we can survive. We can survive as a people if we choose uh, not to catch this wave, but we'll be like so many other churches, y'all, uh, uh, that have chosen to do their own thing their own way. Y'all ain't with me. And so what happens? People do come. Yes, People will come, but lives won't be changed. Healing won't take place. Preaching will be going on, but it won't have no power. Choir will be singing, but they won't have no life. Some going to keep going, but the glory of the Lord will have departed from the house. The late Dr. A.W. Tozer once said, if the Holy Ghost were withdrawn from our churches today, 95% of what they do would still go on, and nobody would know the difference. He goes on to say, if the Holy Ghost were withdrawn from the New Testament church, are y'all with me? 95% of what they did would stop <laughs> And everybody would notice the difference. Uh, no wonder Grandmama Nim said, let the Holy Ghost lead me. Y'all ain't in here. Uh, Dr. Tozer, that's a strong indictment, but it's a true accusation. <laughs> I guess what I'm really trying to say is that God is tired, y'all, of us making plans, uh, then asking him to bless our plans. Time out for the church usurping programs over power. Either Jesus is Lord of all or he ain't Lord at all. Now, I mean, it's evident. It's evident that God has something to say. And we got to understand that when God speaks, he speaks by his spirit. Are y'all in here? I mean, if you, if you recall, Bible readers, uh, when the church began to minister in Acts chapter 2. You remember Acts chapter 2, don't you? Uh, 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 the word is, uh, Reverend Manning, they spoke as the Spirit gave them utterance. Are y'all in here? I know some of y'all going to say uh, that this was through the gift of tongues in operation. And, and, I, and I agree. I agree. Don't, don't get me wrong. But, but if you will study that particular passage, what they were speaking was being understood by those that heard them. Maybe I better say that again. What they were speaking <laughs> was being understood by the hearers. What they were speaking was understood by the hearers. Okay, y'all don't like this kind of preacher. I think you know where I'm going. Now, I do understand that and, and don't get me wrong, I believe in the gift of tongues. Oh, yes, I do. And I believe that tongues are for believers today. However, I also understand that it's hypocritical to speak in an unknown tongue to God in the Spirit and not speak to the needs of the people who understand what you see. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Reverend Evans, get my key and go start my car. I got to get out of here. I'm in trouble. Uh, it's great to speak in tongues to God, but if those that is around you can't understand what you're saying, 
I mean, I didn't write it. It's in your Bible, too. I ain't making it up. It's right there. Study to show thyself approved. A workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly divide. Right, right, rightly. <laughs> rightly divide. It's, I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. It's 1155. But this, this, this phrase, let me go back to Revelations 2. Revelation, this, this phrase in Revelation 2 is repeated, Deacon Irving, in, in each one of the seven letters to the church of Asia Minor. Each one of these churches represent a particular age or, or a particular dispensation of the church. But in each age or dispensation, the Spirit of God is saying something to the church. That means, Reverend Johnson, that I got to be open to hear what God is saying. And so the question is, uh, is anybody listening? Uh, what is God saying? God, God is speaking to the body of Christ uh, concerning his purpose for his people at this juncture in time. And so uh, if I want to know... <laughs> where I'm going, God will tell me. Are y'all with me? If I need to know uh, uh, what I ought to be doing, God will show me. And so if there's a message I need to get, God will reveal it. Are y'all with me? And so, children, we got to be careful not to ignore God, even if it violates your expectation. Let me say that again. Be careful not to ignore God when it seems like it violates your expectation. Jesus said, and it's right there in the red letters, and you know the red letters, uh, my Sunday school teacher taught me when we saw red letters, that's Jesus talking. And so the red letters say, sister, see, he that hath an ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, he that has it here, uh, uh, that's who the Spirit is speaking to. Now, it's not uh, a literal interpretation. It, it, it's not talking about your physical ears, because there's a whole lot of people that got ears. I knew I was going to get to it. I just didn't know when. A whole lot of folk got ears, but can't hear nothing. And they ain't all deaf either. Y'all ain't saying that. It's some folk up in here, up in here, up in here that got ears. But they refuse to listen. But the reference in the text today, Sister Evans, is to the person who will really tune in to what God is saying. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice but a stranger. <laughs> and so what I've discovered is uh, there's a lot of strangers uh, that come every Sunday. There are strangers, Brother Blakey, who are members of the church. But they're strangers when it comes to hearing what thus says the Lord. You remember, you, okay, you, you rem I ain't going to preach today. I'm just lecturing. This is a little talk. But you remember, you remember when Mary came to the tomb looking for Jesus, Bible readers, she, 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 she thought he was uh, the gardener <laughs> until she heard him talk. When the 120 were in the upper room, they stayed until they heard a sound from heaven. Are y'all with me? Moses, Bible readers, was on uh, uh, the backside of the mountain when he saw a bush on fire, but the bush wasn't burning. Y'all ain't saying nothing. The burning bush got Moses' attention, but the voice of God speaking from the bush gave Moses his directions. Y'all ain't with me. In other words, God has given all of us as believers the capacity to hear what he's saying. Uh, what do you mean? There's no reason for us not to recognize the voice of God uh, because the next part of that statement uh, suggests that 
ears we have been given are for the purpose of hearing. And so again, this is spiritual, y'all, in nature. My, uh, 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 it's spiritual in nature. Are y'all with me? Uh, I believe that you have two ears and one mouth. Two ears so you can do more listening. One mouth <laughs> so you can do less talking. Lord, deliver me from folk who don't know when to shut <laughs> the, I mean, <laughs> Ah, have you ever been around somebody just can't shut up? I'm going to leave that alone. When God saved you, he gave you spiritual ears so you could discern what comes into your spirit. I mean, come on, y'all. Think about it. That The only way you can plan an idea or concept uh, in an individual is through their hearing. Nothing drives me crazier, Sister Hart, than grandchildren and children who will not listen. Go in the bedroom, look on my nightstand, right next to the lamp, there's a nail file. Go in the bedroom. Are y'all with me? Look on my nightstand. Right next to the lamp, there is a nail file. Papa, I look and I don't see the nail file. Go in my bedroom, on my side of the bed, <laughs> on my nightstand. Y'all ain't with me. You got to listen to what thus. Sometimes he wants to bless us, Regina. Sometimes he wants to bless us, and he says, go in my room. Go on my side of the bed, right next to the lamp, and there your blessing will be. We go into the room. Y'all ain't with me. Go on the other side of the bed. Don't look on the night table. We look on the dresser. We come back. We say, Lord, I did what you told me to do. I look where you told me to look. You got to listen to what thus. I'm done. <laughs> if, you, if, if, if I want to persuade you... I can only do it through your listening to me. If I want to change you, it will only happen if you hear me. What you hear, Reverend Lambert, has a whole lot to do with what you believe. And so maybe, just maybe, <laughs> just maybe that's what's wrong with a lot of modern day church folk. I don't know, Deacon Reuben, just maybe some people come every Sunday. They hear the good music. They rock, they bop, they dance, but they don't hear. Notice, if you will, the folk who talk all the time, the folk that's always talking, they usually don't know too much. <laughs> a still tongue, grandma said, makes a wise head. Uh, 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 in other words, there are people that come to church Sunday after Sunday. They pass notes. They talk to their neighbor. They own their cell phone. Okay. 
they never really hear what's being said. Never ceases to amaze me. People will say, Pastor, how come y'all didn't tell me y'all was having blah, blah, blah on Tuesday night? Well, we've been announcing it for six weeks. You've been at church for the last six weeks. What do you mean we didn't tell you? They pass notes. They do everything else. Then after church, they get in the parking lot. And you can hear the same people say, uh, uh, girl, did, did pastor say what I thought he said? In other words, Brother Bolden, had they been listening, they wouldn't have to wonder. They would have heard it with their own ears. And it's even true sociologically and psychologically. If, 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 when you were a if, you were, if when you were a child, you were told positive things, you grow up with a positive outlook. But to you that only tell your child negative things, <laughs> that's what they're going to grow up believing. They, they believe what they hear. Some folk don't have nothing now in life because they, they, they heard the wrong stuff. Psalm 46 and 10, and I'm really done, y'all. 46 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Literally, Reverend Evans, that means sometimes you got to stop and be still so you can hear what the Lord is saying. Sometimes you got to be still. That means sometimes I got to lay aside my preconceived ideas, my prejudices, and say, Lord, speak to me. Are y'all in here? So, Sister Sharon, what determines my level of spirituality is what I hear from God. I was recently looking at TV and the Learning Channel. There was a, a group, they went to Mexico, they went on a tour of the Malaysian ruins, and uh, as they went through the tour, the, the tour guide was explaining all the different ruins, and he talked about the pyramids and the temple of the, the priests and the, the sacrificial pit and uh, the observatory, and as the tour guide spoke, I noticed uh, what they saw became meaningful. In other words, without the tour guide, to those of us watching the show, it would have just been a pile of rocks that uh, used to mean something to somebody. But when the tour guide spoke, not only uh, did he give direction, but his words gave life and purpose to what we saw. Well, I've discovered... <laughs> It's the same way with the Holy Spirit. There's a whole lot of stuff in my life, Brother Fred, that just seemingly don't make sense. I do all I can to try to understand it, but it's not until I look at the guide from the tour guide. That's when it all starts making sense. And there are times I look at God's word and what I read don't really make sense. There are times that I study and I flip through and I try uh, to make it make sense. But the moment I pause and let the Spirit reveal what he wants to reveal. Sister Brazil, that's when I get a clear understanding of what thus says the Lord. Uh, when I go through life and, uh, uh, and I see how other people do stuff, uh, I don't understand what makes people do the things they do. 
Many times I don't understand why we act the way we act. But when I tune in to what God says in his word, uh, I understand then that everybody in Israel <laughs> is not of Israel. Uh, in other words, everybody at church <laughs> ain't really in church. <laughs> when I feel led to move in a certain direction, uh, uh, many times, Tasha, my carnal nature tells me it would be more feasible to go in another direction. Uh, at the point that I tune in to what thus says the Lord, uh, then I understand that what may not make sense in the carnal will make sense in the spiritual. I wish y'all could hear me today. When I hear God moving, uh, 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 then I know that my natural man needs to move out of the way. <laughs> uh, are y'all with me today? Uh, every now and then, <laughs> I kind of feel like preaching now. When I move <laughs> from the natural man uh, and, and I move... <laughs> By the word of God, when I get down on my double deuce of benders and have a little talk with Jesus, it's then that I get directions where he leads me. I will, I will follow. Is there anybody here that ever tried to do it on your own? And then you decided to be still and see what the Lord had to say. Yeah. I ain't going to preach it. Yeah. Where he leads me, I will follow. Is there anybody here that knows if he leads you, you'll have victory on the other side? Where he leads me, I will follow. That's enough. <laughs> Is anybody listening? Can you hear what thus saith the Lord? As we stand all over the building, victory is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. In the name of Jesus. Anybody got victory? In the name of Jesus. We have it. Victory. Victory. Come on, y'all help me. Did you tell him? Get thee behind me. Victory is mine. Victory. Get thee behind. Victory. Thank you. 
Jesus! Precious! Jesus! Happiness! Happiness! <laughs> Today! There you go. I told Sweden. How many got joy? Joy is mine. Joy. Today, I told Satan, get me joy. says in Revelations chapter 3, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Is there anybody here today that has heard the word of the Lord, that has heard the word of the Lord, the Lord is knocking on the door of your heart right yeah, now. Yeah. If you're here today, would you come down and take these deacons by the hand? Give them your hand and give God your heart. Are you here today? Are you here? Are you here today? We have the victory in Jesus. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Are you here? Are you here? Maybe you don't have a church on. I can think of no better church and no better pastor than the one we have here at the Bethel Community Church. Are you here today? Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. How good the Lord really is. I want Reverend Evans to come. He has some special information and announcement he'd like to share with us today, and then we'll be ready to go. On September 6, 2022, which happens to be my birthday, it's a day that I will never, ever forget. But on that day, tragedy hit the Robinson family and our church family as well. Because on our day, on that day, one of our babies, one of our beloved, Alexandria Rosie Lee Robinson, transitioned from labor to reward right, right. at the age of 15. With that being said, we have decided and are set to honor her life by launching the LLAR Scholarship. <laughs> LLAR means long live Alexandria Robinson. <laughs> 
This scholarship will first benefit the seniors in the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District in 2024, which would have been Alexandria's graduating class. Right. And, and on next year, Alexandria's parents will receive her diploma that she Amen. worked so hard to get. Amen. Long live Alexandria Robinson. That's right. So with that said, also on June 10th, 2023, we will be walking for Alex in the second annual Pre-Father's Day 5K at the Sassoon Marina and Waterfront. Right. Some of you participated last year, and uh, bro Brother Calvin was there, and <laughs> Deacon Will brought his family, and Brother Canton, um, he, he, br he brought up the rear. Where you at, Brother Canton? You here? <laughs> he brought up the rear, but he finished the race. <laughs> and we're looking for walkers and workers for this, uh, to make this event great, a great success. Amen. Now understand, it doesn't cost anything to participate in this walk, but we're asking for at least $15 donation to fund our scholarship. Amen. And, and, and Pastor Gilmore, I'm just crazy enough to believe that there are at least 15 men in here who Amen. will, like I will, give $100 to this cause. Amen. I'm gonna Absolutely. give that today. Amen. But we need you, you, and you, and you, and you out in YouTube and, and Facebook land to support this grand event. Um, if you're writing a check, you can make it out to be, uh, Bethel Community Church. Now, it doesn't go to the church, right. but it goes through the church. Right, right. That's right. I, I want to make that plain right now. That's it goes right. through the church to, to where it needs to go. But you can make it out to Bethel Community Church. Um, and and uh, we've also um, created a drop down on our Givelify. If you look at your Givelify, That's right. you can press the LL, hashtag LLAR scholarship fund Amen. to give. Now, this is over and beyond what your tithes are. Still give your tithes, right? <laughs> and if you have any questions, you can ask me. You can see Sister Hall. Stand up, Sister Hall. Um, Sister Robinson, uh, she's right there. And Michael, I don't see Michael here. But you can see any one of us for any details. Amen? We're going to support this, right? Amen. I need some volunteers. I need some walkers. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Evans, for helping us to continue to keep the memory of our dear sleeping beauty, Alexandria, alive. Amen. So church family, I want us to support this big, amen? And this is not gonna be a one-time scholarship, but it's going to be annual, it's going to go on forever and ever. We're going to bless uh, some young person. And so Reverend Evans is spearheading this along with Sister Kelly and Brother Michael. Brother Rob is at work today, but we need all of our support, amen? Now, I'm anticipating Reverend Evans, and they've been working with the city of Sassoon, and the waterfront area is going to be blocked off for this day or by the police station. Um, but there, it's a big, it's going to be a big day. They're going to block off the street for us so that we can do this walk. But we need as many of y'all, get your friends, your family. I'm anticipating that once we tell the school district all of her friends are going to come. All, a lot of the teachers and staff, they've all, they, they already said they were uh, on board with us, amen? And so we're anticipating this being big. I think Alex touched a lot of lives, amen? She touched way more lives than even she or her parents realized. And so long live, L L long live, Alejandria, that's what I called her. So we want to do that. Make sure if you have any questions, see Reverend Evans or Sister Kelly or Brother Michael. But we want to make sure if you give to that scholarship, make sure if you write a check that you put on the memo part of your check, L-L-A-R or some kind of way, you know, make a 
change, make it so we know. And uh, our finance team is already set up. Those monies are going over here. They will be kept on hold until such time that the scholarship team decides who will receive the scholarship. Amen? Amen. So we want it to be big. I know that once the school district gets wind of it, they're going to donate and others. So Bethel, we want to be out front. Amen? God bless you. We are ready for the benediction again to all of our visitors. I feel that I voice the sentiment of our church family at large when I say to you, come back and share with us again. So good to have Brother Keith Hamilton's family, his uh, family from Texas. Amen. God bless you all. Don't be strangers when you come here. You're at home. Amen. Now, immediately following this service, everybody say after church. Immediately following this church service, when we dismiss in the chandelier room, we have some cake and ice cream. I don't really want to go, but I got to go. But we're sending off Sister Therese and Sister Juanita Webb. They're moving by choice. They decided. I don't even know why, but whatever. That's what they decided to do. I'm still waiting on God to change his providence. I'm waiting on a miracle. But uh, after this service, we're going to go and send them off. I guess this is their last week. Somebody told me that Sister Juanita's last Monday in the office was last Monday. I'm like, nobody told me. I don't approve of that. So she'll be there tomorrow, okay? But she, I'm like, she got a pack. Oh, okay, all right. But immediately following this service, we're going to go in this chandelier room, send them off, give them our blessings. They're still going to be members of Bethel. Amen. There ain't no church in Georgia for them. They're going to be right here at Bethel. I just talked about people. Church is changing. We can log on and watch online. They're going to put that into action. Amen. They're going to give online. They're going to support. They're going to worship online. Amen. So, but I got to do this cake and ice cream. I don't want to. So if y'all go in there and I don't show up, you know why. Because I got an attitude about them leaving. But y'all go get some cake. <laughs> but we're going to go and send them off with our blessings. They have been very instrumental in the growth of this church. Amen. I can't say enough about their dedication, their commitment to the cause of Christ and to the kingdom, to me as a pastor and to you as a church. Amen? So we're going to do that. I want everybody to go over and just try to talk them out of it, okay, if you can. <laughs> go over there and try to twist their arm and try to tell them California is better than Georgia. But we're going to do that immediately following this service, all right? We're praying for you, Sister Williams. I thought I saw Sister Williams here. No. Sister Williams, God bless you in the home going of her sister, amen, her twin sister. And I know that's hard, Sister Williams. We are continuing to pray for you, amen. Sister Regina is going in for a procedure. We're praying for you, amen. We believe that God is a healer, amen. I say God is a healer. I know that he is a miracle worker. And so we're going to continue praying for them, continue praying for those who are sick, among us. If nothing else to claim our attention, we're standing all over the building. God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Thank you to all of you for your support of our church's 14th year anniversary celebration. It was a great time in the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let the church say amen. God has spoken, God has spoken, let the church let the church good to see Sister Leah Johnson here. Let the church God has spoken. Let the church. And now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us, henceforth now and forevermore. Let us all say amen. See you in the chandelier room.